flowers are beautiful so as the process of flowering in today's topic let us study about physiology of flowering which is unique to angiosperms ripeness to flower is a physiological and morphological developmental process in angiosperms once the plant attains this particular stage it can flower when the plant is very young it will be under vegetative phase that means it is not genetically programmed to produce flowers but once it reaches the reproductive phase it is capable of producing flowers and that particular capacity to produce flower is called as ripeness to flower which results into the flowering light and darkness are the most favorable conditions for flowering response of organisms to the length of the light and dark period are termed as photoperiodism providing proper light treatments to the plants will lead to flowering in plants and that's why the light is very important stimulus for flowering the duration of day length received by a plant is called as photo period the influence of the photo period on the initiation of flowering through the changes in physiology of leaf is called as photoperiodic induction and the required repetitive photo periods for evocation of flower by triggering the responses of apex is termed as photoperiodic inductive cycles the cycles may vary depending on the plant species for example in xanthium only one inductive cycle is sufficient to produce flowering triggering of flower evocation by the light is called as photoperiodic stimulus light stimulus is sensed by leaves to understand that if we take a plant and if we remove all its leaves so it becomes a defoliated plant and if we provide proper light conditions then the flowering won't occur but a plant with single leaf can also bring flowering when a proper light conditions are given and this clearly suggests that leaves will take or receive the light stimulus and they start responding to it through photoperiodic inductive cycles based on photoperiodism and their responses plants can be classified mainly into three types when the short day length and long darkness is provided and it results into the flowering then such plants are called as short day plants or sdps whereas long day lengths and short darkness durations are given and plants will flower then it is called as long day plants or ldps some of the plants are neutral in their response to these photo periods and those plants are called as day neutral plants or dnps so these are the three very important categories in the plants based on their photoperiodic responses phytochrome a protein complex act as a photoreceptor in flowering phytochrome has got two forms and during day time it will be in pr forms which absor absorbs 660 nanometer red lights and it becomes pfr form during night time the pfr form uh, absorbs 730 nanometers and it again becomes pr form these interconversions of the 
phytochromes into PR form and PFR form depending on the intensity of light or depending on the uh, dominant light conditions will bring changes in flowering patterns of the different plants. Long days and short nights will favor the conversion of PR form into PFR form and it brings flowering in long day plants. Whereas the conversion of PFR into PR form brings flowering in short day plants. Summarily, PR to PFR conversion will favor flowering in short day plants whereas PFR to PR favors flowering in long day plants. Let us understand flowering responses to the varied photo periods. The first condition is where the shorter day lengths are present. Shorter day length refers to the day length which is less than 12 hours, maybe 9 hours, 10 hours like that and longer darkness. So in such conditions, these conditions will lead flowering in short day plants and no flowering can be observed in long day plants. When we provide longer day lengths, the flowering will be initiated in long day plants, but no flowering will be initiated in short day plants. In the short day scenario, the darkness, if it is interrupted with again short light periods, again it shows varied responses. There will be no flowering in short day plants and some of the long day plants also won't show flowering, but only some long day plants can show flowering or accelerated flowering in them. The fourth condition where the day length is interrupted by darkness will result in flowering in only in long day plants. That means long day plants will flower uninterruptedly, but it doesn't show flowering in short day plants. So these are all the various responses of the plants for different types of photo periods. So far, we have studied different influences of so many factors on the flowering and let us study examples at this end. Coffee is a short day plant, rice is a short day plant, tobacco is a short day plant, pisum sativum pea plant is a long day plant and the beetroot is a long day plant. Raphanus sativus is a long day plant. Let us study day neutral plants. Cotton is an example for day neutral plant. Maize is an example for day neutral plant. Potato is an example for day neutral plant. Hope this particular lecture was useful to you. Thank you for listening.